Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, the Career College Exposition Webinar. My name is Bob Martin and I'm with the Imagine America Foundation. Joining me on today's session will be my colleague at Imagine America, Lee Doubleday. Lee and I are very excited about today's career topic, Automotive Technology, sponsored by Universal Technical Institute, UTI. UTI is the country's leading provider of high quality career focused education with sites, education colleges located nationwide. UTI is also a 20 year sponsor of the Imagine America scholarship and award programs, having provided admissions based financial aid to more than 15,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about IAF Imagine America Foundation to our website, www.imagine-america.org, or you can call either Lee or I directly or email. Automotive technology careers are some of the most popular programs in career colleges. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains the leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified automotive technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation is Universal Technical Institute, UTI is one of the premier automotive education providers in the United States with campuses located nationwide. Joining us today to discuss in detail the looming automotive technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background. Before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with questions and answers. Once we finish these remarks, we'll move directly into today's presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the chat feature in the Zoom meeting area. At the end of the presentation, or approximately 3.25 p.m., I will then present any questions offered by the participants on this call. We will address as many questions as possible and provide written responses if needed. We will have a hard close at 3.30 p.m. So without taking more time out of today's presentation, let me turn the session over to Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm with the Universal Technical Institute. I'm the National Director of Counselor and Academic Relations with UTI, and so I'm excited about today's uh, webinar. I'm going to get right into it because we have a short amount of time. The agenda today, uh, threefold, challenges facing the workforce, opportunities in the automotive industry, and then finally, Universal Technical Institute's career pathways. I'm going to start off with um, the, the changing workforce. Uh, the workforce has changed dramatically from the 20th century to the 21st century. Um, in the 20th century, we were very much an agriculture, manufacturing uh, economy, and rightfully so. But that has changed very much here in the 21st century. As you can see, we are now very much a service-oriented uh, economy. If you own a home, if you own a car, if you own a washing machine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the, the need for service is always there. And what's really tough is that, you know, we can, we might be able to get service, but then getting quality, quality service and qualified technicians to work on this is the problem. And as was men mentioned in the introduction, the, the skills gap um, is, um, is tremendous right now in this country and, and in the world for that matter. And so um, we want to uh, try to close that gap as much as possible. A recent survey was conducted of 150,000 Boy Scouts. Um, the Scouts were asked, how many of you would love a skilled trades career? And as you can see, a whopping 3% said, yes, sign me up. They just, you know, no, very little interest there. But when we asked the same group, how many of you would like a STEM career? 
over 45% said, yes, this is, I love something like this. And you can see there's a disconnect right there because students don't understand that STEM is skilled trades and skilled trades is STEM. They don't see that, uh, that connection. Unfortunately, we have many educators that don't see that connection either. STEM versus non-STEM education. And this is, this is really where, where the uh, disconnect happens. I, was, uh, I had the good fortune, I was speaking at a, um, at a uh, seminar uh, at, on the eastern part of the United States and there was a, uh, an admiral from the United States Naval Academy spoke before me. And he was going on about their STEM uh, program, their very exclusive STEM program. The top 15% is all that are allowed in. And he went on and on about this program, which was sound like a great program. After it was done, I walked up to him and I, I congratulated him on a great speech. And I said, you know, I, I have a concern though. Why only the top 15%? Because I think we know that STEM is around us all the time. It is in almost every field, you know, that, um, you know, we tend to think of like um, auto technicians. Do they use STEM? Absolutely. You know, if you want to scare yourself to death, open up the hood of a new Volvo. It will scare you to death. Um, or carpenters building a home. Uh, you know, they have to know how to use STEM as well. So that house is going to be square. Uh, so uh, you can see that STEM is very much a part of the occupations and, and will continue to grow. The opportunity we have now is that over half, or almost half, I should say, of the college graduates um, that, are, that are out there in the field right now working didn't even need their degree. They got a college degree, got a bachelor's degree, maybe even a master's degree, and they're not even using it. You know, and the other thing is that only a little over 20% of the jobs um, uh, available today even require a bachelor's degree. Um, so there is another disconnect as well, because we have all of these college graduates walking around with student loan debt, and they're not even using their degree. They're, they're in some other field or doing something else where they could have saved their money and still done what they're doing right now. I talk a lot when I talk to educators across the country about the old smart versus the new smart. So what is the old smart? Well, the old smart was... Um, get to the best school you can, you know, find the best school and get there. And then when you get, you get there, then figure out what it is you want to do. And if you do, then you go get that degree, that bachelor's degree, that coveted bachelor's degree. And then when you get that degree, you walk out the front door and go, here I am world, hire me. You know, that's the old smart. And it, you know, it's quite a bit different because this just isn't working today. And people always ask me, say, yeah, but who does that anymore? Well, Check the, um, you know, the admission scandal that we have going on right now with USC and some other prestigious schools. Some parents paid a lot of money for their students to get into these so-called uh, great schools, these prestigious schools in the country. So it does still go on today and continues to go on. So the new smart is a 180 from that. In the new smart, the first thing we want to do is figure out what do we want to do? Or as I always ask educators, what, is every little, what do we ask every little kid in the country? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I always challenge high school counselors, the next time your junior or senior walks into your office, ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because we stop asking that, that question. Um, we need to find out. I spoke at the uh, National FFA Conference um, uh, this past year and uh, spoke to about 500 um, students. And I said, you know, the, the, the best thing you could do is go lock yourself in your bedroom. You know, you don't, nobody else in there and just say, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? And then walk out and sell it, you know, and um, don't let people talk you out of it. So that's the first thing we want to do. And then we want to find out what do they need to reach that goal? Do they need a bachelor's degree? Do they need an associate's degree? Or do they just need a competency-based credential? A diploma, something on those lines. That's the next part we have to figure out. And then finally, what school do they need? You know, maybe they just need cosmetology school. Maybe they need a technical school, but then maybe they need the college or university <clears throat> or maybe the community college. But we're gonna determine this based on what they want to do and what they want to be when they grow up. <clears throat> the rule of 127, 
I talk about this often with uh, educators. It's a very simple rule, but I'm amazed at how few educators have ever even heard of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The rule of one, two, seven is pretty simple. If you add one, two, and seven together, you get 10. For every 10 careers that are available today, right now, this very moment, only one would require an advanced degree, that meaning a master's degree or more. Only two would require a bachelor's degree. However, seven of the 10 careers available today, right now, only require a competency-based credential or an associate's degree. Seven out of 10. Here's another disconnect because right now we're pushing students into college or universities at a 70% clip. So you see, we're doing just the opposite of what the economy is telling us we should be doing. That's why we have the skill shortage right now because we're not following the rule of 127. Skilled trades require STEM, we know this. Um, we've got to get away from this myth of university for all attitude. This started back in 1971 with, uh, with um, uh, Griggs versus Duke Power, <clears throat> where at that time it was, it was deemed um, unconstitutional for us to use aptitude tests and things like that. They're, they're, not, they're, they're unconstitutional, they, they, they're not fair. So what are we gonna use, Duke Power says? Ah, a college degree. If you have a college degree, that means you're smart. That means you're qualified. That means you're excellent for whatever it is you want to do. And we know now today that's not working any longer, but yet we're still stuck in that cycle that, oh, you have to have a college degree. And a lot of this comes from parents because their parents, just like my parents, you know, I was, I was destined, I was going to college. Fortunately, I wanted to be a teacher and a coach and an administrator so that it paid off for me. But what if I'd want to become something else where I wouldn't have needed that degree? So we have to pay attention to that. Competency-based credentials are what employers are looking for. What can you do for them? What can you do for their company or, or their corporation, whatever it is? That's the message that we have to get out there, that they're, when they're making their hiring decisions, they want to know what do you bring the, to the table that can help them to be more successful. The second part of today's agenda is opportunities in the automotive industry. <clears throat> The automotive industry is STEM. There is no doubt about it at all. As I said earlier, you know, if you want to scare yourself to death, open up the hood of a new Volvo. You can see, like for instance, this truck here and many of your cars. If you're driving a 2017 or a newer car, or I should say if your students are driving a 2017 or newer car, uh, they are wired for autonomous driving. Now don't take your hands off the steering wheel, please, but I'm just telling you that the, that that this this technology is here. It's not science fiction any longer. Um, you know, we have cars that um, um, that have lane mitigation. They have blind spot detection. They have rain sensing wipers. Um, voice active activated navigation. Voice activated controls of the car. I can go on and on and on. But the the question remains: Who's going to work on this stuff? And we can say, well, it's getting too technological. It's getting too complicated. But these things save lives, like the rear cam, you know, the, 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 the uh, backup cameras that we have in the cars now. Those save lives. The blind spot indicators, those save lives. So they're vital to us. But the problem still remains, who's going to work on this? I read an article just uh, the other day about um, farmers uh, getting this, the new combines and the new tractors out with all this technology, and they're looking for older models because they, they don't know how to operate them. But the biggest problem is we don't have anybody to work on them. So if they break down the field, who's going to fix these things? That's the problem we have, and that's where this skills gap is coming from. There, there's a growing demand in the transportation industry. This problem is not going away. It is only getting bigger and bigger. You can see 1.3 billion vehicles on the road worldwide, 260 million of those in this country alone. And the need for technicians, 1.2 million technicians by 2026. That's only six years. And we, we, we have to fill this demand. And um, right now we're not doing a real good job of that. And then finally, the last part of our agenda today is Universal Technical Institute's Career Pathways. 
One of the things that we are very strong at with UTI is the industry aligned technology. We have alliances with, with over 35 manufacturers and we work closely with them um, so that we can teach this technology that they're putting out. For instance, we just got an email today. I just received an email from uh, that Volvo is going to give UTI 36 S60s that are totally electric cars. Volvo is after Tesla. They're trying to get a corner of that market now. And um, so they're putting out these cars and they recognize, hey, we have to have technicians to work on these things. So they are giving us 36 of those so we can put three at a campus so that our students then will know how to work on these vehicles. They're gonna be twin engine uh, electric motors and uh, very, very high tech. One of the things that we do at, at our, in our program is we, we take one course at a time. You go for three weeks, you're gonna do nothing but brakes and then nothing but transmissions for three weeks solid. That's where we're teaching those competency-based credentials and we're building a technician. If they can't pass this one, they can't go on to the next one. They have to learn as they go. We also try to fashion everything after the dealerships. So we have part of our program is online because that's what dealerships are doing now. They're training their technicians because it's cheaper to do it that way. We help students to find their passion. Uh, we start that with the interview process. You can't just come to UTI, you have to be invited. And that's an interview done with the parents and their student together. Uh, we will not introduce or, or interview a student without the parents there. And we go over the different things because we offer auto, diesel, collision, motorcycle, marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. We offer all these things. We wanna make sure it's a good fit for them and that they're a good fit for us. But the big thing is we want to find their passion, what they wanna do. These are our locations all over the country. Of course, we're speaking to the group now out in, in uh, the southwestern United States and in Arizona. We have two campuses in Phoenix. Um, we have our UTI campus in Avondale, and then we have our MMI, which is our motorcycle marine campus in um, uh, Phoenix. So we have locations all over the country. So there's usually a campus fairly close to, um, to where you're located. And as I mentioned earlier, the 35 plus industry relationships, these are the, the uh, companies that we're training for. We're not preparing students for Jiffy Lube. We're preparing students to go to work for BMW, for, for Ford, for Mercedes, for Honda, for Mercury Marine, for Harley Davidson, all these companies. That's who we're preparing um, our students for because these are stable companies. They pay well, they offer great benefits. It's, it's a, it's a win-win for both parties. We, as I said, we have 12 campuses nationwide. Um, we are, um, we, we say that we place four out of five of our graduates. Actually, our placement is a little bit higher than that, uh, but we say four out of five is kind of a disclaimer. But uh, we work very hard and we don't feel like we've been successful until we get that student placed in the industry. We have over 220,000 graduates and that number continues to grow uh, every year. That we're doing our best to fight this skill shortage and, um, um, and we'll continue to do so. A lot of times what we like to do is we like to use our graduates because they're great ambassadors. We want them to tell future students what it's gonna be like. And these students will tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. But the best part about these students is they show their passion. They're doing what they love to do and they want to share that passion with other people. So they're, they're great ambassadors for the industry because they, they get it and they talk about what they do and the hard work that they put in to make that happen. They try to get across to students that, hey, this isn't an easy road. It is a tough road, but it's well worth the journey. Financial assistance, we are Title IV funded, so we, we do accept the FAFSA. We offer financial aid uh, for those who qualify. Um, we offer, um, um, over $15 million in scholarships. We offer housing grants, institutional grants. We have third party programs to help with emergency expenses called LIFE when things come up. And the one I skipped on purpose is our TRIP partnership. We have over 4,700 employers that do TRIP, which is a tuition reimbursement incentive program. And what these, um, I don't know if you guys have better luck than we do, but it's tough to get students to fill out scholarships. I always ask that question all the time and I get chuckles from everyone, but we have a tough time with that. So, um, so we do our best to try to uh, find other ways to give students incentive. And the TRIP employment uh, program seems to be working great. And how this works is 
we have um, employee, employers that will offer students packages upon graduation. Uh, for instance, Penske Auto Group, they will offer a $25,000 package for our graduates. That will include extra money on top of their, of their uh, salary that they can use to pay off their student loans. They can use it to pay off their, uh, uh, to, to buy tools uh, for relocation, for uniforms, whatever they want to use that money for, but that money is there for them. And it's available to them in those increments as long as they stay working there. You know, the dealership has to get a return on their investment, obviously, and that's what they're trying to do. But this is very successful, which is why our graduation rate continues to climb. Our, our graduation rate is one of the tops in the country, and a lot of it, we think, is because of these trip partnerships that we have. UTI is here to help. We know that you as counselors, you have a tough job. We know that. I come from education. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. And um, we know that you're out there working with these students. What we want to do is partner with you. Um, we offer uh, pre presentations in the schools. We like to speak. A lot of times counselors think we just want to speak to the auto class and all that. That's not true. We want to speak in the academic classrooms as well. We want those computer kids, those math kids, those science kids, because we are a STEM school. Um, we, uh, we want to be able to explain our scholarship opportunities and our trip employment, those kind of things. And uh, we also offer professional development. I do professional development all over the country with school districts. Uh, my partner, Jer Jerry Elmer and I uh, do a lot of work with, uh, with school districts. And we come in and everything we do is free. Uh, for instance, just three weeks ago, I did uh, some uh, work in, in Florida. Uh, I performed uh, 18 STEM workshops in three days. My voice was shot, but it was a lot of fun with the with the kids, and we had a lot of the staff involved as well. So we do those types of things. So if there's any, any time that we can ever help you, we would love to do that. So please feel free to reach out to us. Follow us on, on our uh, social media. We do Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube. You, you'll see our commercials on television. We try every way possible to reach out to students, as well as doing the workshops that we that we do in the schools uh, to, to, uh, to find those that are interested. So uh, please feel free to reach out to us uh, on any of these um, uh, venues and uh, we can answer your questions and help you. And then finally, this is my uh, contact information. I, uh, <clears throat> I love talking to counselors and administra administrators. I do it almost every day of my life. Uh, this is my phone number, this is my email address, and this is also my Instagram account. So please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will answer your questions. I will answer the phone. If I don't answer the phone, I will return your phone call. But um, I, want, I want to um, be able to visit with you as fellow educators and uh, share with you what we do and answer your questions and see if there's any way at all possible that we can partner with you. I want to thank you for your time and attention today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Coyle. We appreciate it. Um, let's go to, a, as I promised, we're going to go to a couple of questions. It uh, looks like we're going to have, to, right now we have three. If there are any questions that come up, feel free, uh, the audience, to send them into in me. Um, first question, uh, Dr. Coyle, if we wanted to talk to one of the UTI local representatives, should we go to the UTI website or contact you directly? Well, uh, the, you know, great question, and you can you can do it either way. Uh, you can uh, if you contact the campus, um, or you can get online and find it. You can find our location and call them, uh, ask the operator, uh, tell them where you're from, and they will get you hooked up with that person. Or maybe an easier way would be just to email me or call me, and I will know exactly who who uh, should be in contact with you, and I can actually reach out to that rep and have them get back in touch with you. Okay. Second question. Um, this is actually a call from the earlier session that we had uh, this morning with the same, the same geographic area, asking me about cost comparisons with community college programs. Get that over and over. Can you, can you address that a little bit, Dr. Cole? I, I can. Um, uh, I, I'll, the elephant in the room, yes, we're more expensive than community college. There's no doubt about it. Uh, if you come to one of our campuses, you'll see why because of all the inventory, all the tools. I mean, we all, we, we furnish the students with everything they're going to need to be successful. Um, but it's kind of misleading because of the fact that um, uh, with, our, um, uh, with our programs, they're 10 to 17 months long and you're done. Uh, we fashion our programs 
the, like the dealerships. Dealerships don't take spring breaks, so we don't take spring breaks. Dealerships don't take summers off, we don't take summers off. So we push our kids through the program so they're ready to go in, in as little as 10 months, and, and but if they get more advanced training, then it could be a year and a half. Uh, and when you compare that to a community college, that you're gonna be there two plus years, and in a college or university, we're gonna be there four plus years, uh, we, we compare very favorably there because while those students are still in school spending money, our students have graduated and now they're making money. It kind of gets to the last question, if you don't mind, um, expanding on it. They were asking, what's the different length of, of programs offered uh, at UTI? Length meaning, I guess, duration of the program. Okay. Well, as I said, 10 to 17 months, like, like I said, for our diesel industrial program, that's a 10 month program, uh, 45 weeks. And uh, they get through that program and they're out and ready to be employed. Um, we have uh, like our, our, um, our motorcycle programs are anywhere from um, uh, 48 to 72 weeks, depending upon how, uh, how much training they want to get. Our collision programs is uh, 50, 51 weeks. So just one week shy of a year. Uh, our, um, uh, automotive program is 51 weeks as well. So it, it varies quite a bit uh, on just exactly how much training they want. And another nice thing too is because of our alliances with the manufacturers, some of our programs such as Volvo and such as um, International and a few of these others, uh, uh, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, they actually pay for that advanced training for the students. So uh, there's opportunities for students to get some some free education there. So it varies with the program, but None of our programs go past the 17 months. Okay, uh, we promised them a, a hard close. Uh, uh, by way of reminding you, uh, we, have, we have compiled and will forward a set of all follow-up questions to all the participants on this call. Uh, number two, IAF has, record, has recorded this session and will forward this to all the registrations if you want to listen to it at, at your convenience at a later date. In addition, this session has been placed on our website, www.imagine-america.org, uh, with download instructions if you want to go and download this to listen to. Uh, finally, we're going to be conducting a survey to determine what are the uh, possible topics would be of interest to you and, and to your students. Before closing, I'd like to thank all the participants that joined us, taking time out of your very busy schedule to listen to Dr. Coyle today. I would also like to thank Dr. Coyle for sharing with us today's presentation and to encourage each and every one of you, if needed, to contact him directly with any questions related to UTI or his presentation. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation and Imagine America Radio, B. Doubleday and myself, I'd like to thank you and wish you a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>